maybe would it be interesting just as an idea just to keep it kind of going back and forth would be interesting for me to start with asking you about what it takes to run you know a real estate sales you know to, to be a top real estate agent um, and to you know operate in the investment market and do that successfully and then you start with that and then you bounce it back at me with what does it take to you know be a managing director of a real estate agency or something like that would that sure. do you guys think that would be would we'll try be that kind of more interesting I can always chop it out if it's as boring as I expect it will be. <laughs> Welcome to The Lowdown, Wellington's number one real estate podcast. I'm here with Adam, great friend, business partner, and uh, Mr. Coburn. How are hey, you? Hey, I'm good, Craig. How about yourself? Uh, you know, I've been better. I've still got a sore arm, but yes. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm recovering. So but the sun's good. shining. Yep, sun's shining out there. It's a good day. Yeah. Uh, and, days. you know. Uh, we're still in a tough market. How are you finding it out there? Uh, yeah, it's an interesting market, isn't it? I mean, um, well, it's been tough since kind of late 2021. Or, I mean, I reckon it was tough before mm. the technical peak of the market, if you like, because prices peaked in Wellington in well, October 2021, the rest of the country on average in November 2021. But as is typically the case, activity activity leads results, right? And we saw activity levels dropping off from, I reckon, about middle of 2021. And so it's been t a tough market for over three years, in, in my opinion. Um, so and it kind of ebbs and flows a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, we, we, had a re we had an improving market in 2023 in terms of prices recovering a little bit, but volumes were really low. And as a real estate agent, of course, what we survive on is volume, not prices, right? And so... Volumes have come back a bit 2024, um, but prices have softened. So from a real estate agent's perspective, the market has improved a little bit, although each individual listing has become a bit bit harder work. But we are selling more. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of being a real estate agent, you, how long have you been a real estate agent? Oh, I started in 2007, the previous time that oh, the market right. so just, crapped itself. Yes, that's right. That <laughs> fascinating time to get into the market. So yeah. I'm really interested in your story, Ed. I mean, like, t tell me a little bit about how you found real estate and, uh, and, and, and that, that experience of being in the middle of the GFC a year later, a year after starting. Yeah, gosh. Um, well, how I got into real estate really started um, back in 1998 when um, I was – working in a project in Wellington, not real estate related. I, my background is um, insurance uh, originally, um, not sales, but in the back in the back office, sort of head office insurance. And um, I, I was about to go to London and I read a book about real estate investment by Dolph de Roos and Jan Summers. Uh, and um, I'm a, by training, I'm, I'm a mathematician and um, I found it so logical and so simple and mm. obvious that I decided, shivers, I, I've got to get into real estate as an investor. Mm. Um, so I bought my first investment property with a partner, um, a good friend of mine, Martin, and uh, so we bought a three-flat property in, um, in, in um, Ara Valley, uh, and then I went to London. Uh, now, what was your question? How did I find real estate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's how I sort of got into real estate myself personally as an investor when i came back from london 2005 is when i shortly after that i started um selling real estate um just because i didn't want to um i didn't want to have a boss um anymore so that's when i started sort of selling um and i i'm i don't think i'm your typical um my path has not been a, a typical or maybe there is no typical path you know what i mean um i mean i'm more introverted than I am extroverted, although many people disagree with that, um, <laughs> perhaps yourself included. Um, and I, I got into it really just focusing on the investment space and because I was looking at investment properties all the time and, and buying some and, and so on, I just focused on investors and investment properties really. And I started by growing a list of investors that I could pitch uh, investment properties too so mm. I really didn't start by getting my own listings I got I started by having a list of buyers mm. that, I, that I sold stuff to mm. um, and um, yeah I haven't really followed the typical model I've I've just um, focused on what I love which is the the nuts and bolts of the real estate the numbers of real estate really some people focus on the green tiled splashback you know, I focus on um, the, the 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 economics of it, um, and so that's kind of the path I've I've gone down. Yeah. So it's a great point. You you've carved out a niche that suits mm. your personality. Mm. It suits that what you enjoy and what mm. you're passionate about, and I think that's really important, right? Like, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, 
What do they say if you if you um, if you if you turn your hobby into work, or if you if you if you do what you love to do, it doesn't seem like work. Mm. Um, and I mean, it is a tough game to to get traction in mm. this game, you know, mm. to to establish some a credibility and establish yourself in a niche, and uh, to be and to be the person that people think about. It's all about occupying uh, mind space, isn't it? Mm. Mind share. Mm. Um, that to, to be the person that they ring when when they want to consider selling or even just get advice. And so that's I suppose that's how I've I've done it. I've um, become the expert at least to a, to a group, group of people in a certain segment that that investor space the 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 economics of it if you like the financials of it um and so um uh, i suppose i've gotten built, built my brand personally by being uh, a go-to person when you want advice around that sort of thing and then it's natural then oh well this person's the expert i'll get them to sell it for me as well you know yeah Great. Did and that even answer your question? I can't even remember what question was now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it, it does, Adam. I and mean, I think, you know, you've been so successful in that space and you've really carved out that, that niche uh, really uh, in an impressive way. And, and, and in terms of, like, day-to-day... Um, I, I guess it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's enjoyable to me. I, I, I like reading um, the articles about what's happening in the economy. I like I like thinking about that stuff. I like crunching the numbers. I like drawing the graphs. Mm. You know, I like analysing um, the trends in the marketplace mm. and, and, you know, I, I do my monthly um, market analysis video and, and all that sort of stuff. That To me, that's... It's almost like that's fun. I mean, sometimes it's a chore to do all the numbers and all that, but you know, it's it's really not hard work for me. So, um, um, one thing I, I remember, I used to go to conferences, you know, real estate conferences, how to be successful in, in real estate, and all of the, the, a lot of the recommendations that they would make just didn't gel with me, you know. Mm. Um, but um, in the end, I realised, look, I only need two or three ways to generate business and the key is to be able to do it consistently Mm. Um, and you're not going to do something consistently if you don't enjoy it or if something really irks you if it doesn't if if it if it doesn't resonate with you you're just not going to be able to sustain it Um, and so if you can't do something for 10 years don't don't start it I I suppose yeah it's a great point it's a long game right it's a long game, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone, the people on average sell their house only every seven or eight years or something. So, you know, in terms of repeat business, you might not get much repeat business. You know, it's an, it's another seven years yeah. or eight years, slightly different for investors. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very much a long game, yeah, as you say. Yep. Yeah. What about yourself? I mean, how did your journey start? And um, you, you started um, pretty young, didn't you? I did, yeah. No, I mean, I... Um you know, I was 20 years old when I got my licence mm. uh, and, you know, uh, I have to be honest, you know, uh, being the managing director of a, of a real estate firm was never in my mm. headlights, mm. right? Like mm. it was not something I imagined would, would, would pan, pan out the way it has. So, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. it's been a, been a good time. And how do you, I mean, there's a lot going on in life, right? I mean, and, and there's a lot of talk about balance in life. Mm. Um, I don't mm. I personally think balance is a... Uh, um, I've used to a bit, bit, bit of a nonsense, to be honest. If you want to, if you, my view is, if you want to really succeed at anything, ba- balance will not help. Yeah, you know, you, well, you have to be a maniac. <coughs> yes, but, but, it's a good point. But how do you juggle all? Yeah. You, you know, you're, you're a dad, you're yeah. you're you're a, you're a husband, you're you're a uh, business leader. How, how do you juggle all this stuff? Yeah, I mean, look, it's a, it's a really interesting topic uh, for me. Is, is is that because you look at the likes of people like you know the. Elon Musk and Steve Jobs and these people that achieve incredible things in their lifetimes. They don't you strike know, me as being balanced. Yeah, they're, they're not <laughs> balanced, you know. And, and 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 so I think you know to achieve that kind of uh, you know mm. uh, sort of almost inhuman level of success, I, mm. I think balance is, a, is just just as it doesn't exist, right? Uh, most likely, I mean, there may maybe people that can do it, but I don't think it really does for those people. But but I think for me, it's about priorities, and uh, the reality is that you know if I do one thing for too long. I get bored of it mm, mm. Uh, in, in a straight line, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. But but equally in the same. So so if I was just to throw myself into into real estate twenty four seven for ten years without thinking about anything else during that whole time, I wouldn't last in it, you know. So for me, what what balance means is it just means having that regular time doing other stuff mm-hmm. so that it's still exciting for me, right? And yep. and and then of course when you have kids, I mean everything changes, right? You've yep. got a got a family to. to too and 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 that that's my world you know like my three girls are you know that's that's everything for me mm-hmm. and then and then Longco is everything else uh, plus I've got you know my sport sporting activities um, uh, which I enjoy as well so so that for me is just kind of and and, and what I find really interesting is if I go away on holiday uh, when I get to work three you know like for the first week I can sort of I start it takes me a week to wind down yes then I have like one week where uh, it's perfect I'm kind of relaxed and I'm good mm-hmm. third week. 
I miss it. You can't wait I, to get I back. can't wait to get back. I'm just like, <laughs> if, I, if I go for a month, it's too long, right? So, mm. so I learned that a long time ago. And I think that's, that says something about, you know, the cadence of, you know, what you're doing in, in terms of, um, you know, making sure you're getting those, those breaks so that what you've got going on is, is still enjoyable, mm. right? You need those regular breaks to remind yourself mm. that Ashy is awesome, yeah, right? Yeah, true, true. And, and if you don't take them, so for me, that's what balance means. It's really just having having other stuff to focus on. That's mm. not just one thing. Mm, mm. Uh, and, and yeah, so it's a tough gig getting all that right. Mm, sure is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, that's a lot going on um, and running a, I mean, you know, Low & Co is what, 80-odd people, mm. something like that. Um, what is what is the actual, what does your day look like? I mean, what are the actual tasks that you're doing in a day yeah it's a, that, that's a yeah it's a good question I mean it varies from day to day it's one of the reasons why I love it is mm-hmm. because you know I've got you know my, my brain's pretty hyperactive as you know and, mm-hmm. and uh, I get torn in 20 different directions all day long which I which is like a drug for me I mm-hmm. absolutely enjoy that if I had to sit down and write a report for a week I would just be <laughs> I mean you, you, you're laughing because you know yes. <laughs> exactly how hard that would be for me but but uh, the reality is that uh, you know I, I mean I made a decision a long time ago because of that balance I was looking for that I wasn't going to work, uh, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, right? I want to see my family, I want to see my kids, I want to see my wife, I want to have that time. Mm. So, but my day between 8.30 and 6 is intense, mm. right? I don't take breaks. I eat on the fly. I, I just go and I really enjoy that. I run until until I hit 6 and I'm, you know, I'm dead. I'm going, mm. You know, go, you know, um, relax with the family and read the kids' stories and I, you know, don't have to think too hard. So so for me, that's my day and, and, and I can get a lot done in that, in, in that time frame. By, bit, by making it intense. Um, and I structure my day, so I'll, I'll do my brain activities in the morning because I know that by the afternoon, coffee's wearing off, um, you know, I've been running hard all day long, I'm gonna, I, I, I probably at three o'clock, I probably need cake just to get to five, yes. you know, just get to get to six. So, so I know that I gotta do my, my, my heavy brain activities in the morning, and if, if that means I need to, need to think, I'm gonna uh, structure that in the morning. My EA helps me a, a lot mm. on that front. And then I'll do meetings and appointments in the afternoon. So a typical day for me, Get to work at 8.30. We often have a few, um, you know, obviously work meetings depending on the day uh, yeah. in the morning. Uh, get into the brain activities uh, early. Um, uh, get those done. And then and then just usually I'm just meeting people, you know, all afternoon until I go home. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, all up about 80 people. How, how do you manage that many people? I mean... Well, first thing is, is have, have wonderful leadership team that are better at better at me at doing the bit you know doing what I'm not good at doing that's mm-hmm. that's the key mm-hmm. right so we've got Kyla Hamilton in our office who she's just world class leader absolutely incredible and she manages the operations of the business so you know on the surface it looks like you know that's a big big machine it must be a lot of work but when you you know you divide the labor up amongst um, you know talented people uh, it's all manageable and you know uh, as a managing direct, managing director buck stops with me you know, I have to uh, be the one ultimately signing off on everything. Mm. But, you know, strategy-wise, we've got Kyla, we've got, uh, you know, Jason Lowe, our Director of Growth, mm. um, uh, and myself. Uh, and then we have, of course, you know, people in finance that do, and, and people in uh, marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nadia, amazing, 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 uh, you know, new addition to the team who's doing an incredible job in marketing. So stand on the shoulders of giants mm. uh, and get other people that are better at doing uh, the job than you are. Yeah, yeah. That's the key. So, I mean, before Lime Co., you weren't, well, you were you're an independent contractor running a a, a small team, right? Uh, within mm. a within a, another real estate brand, um, how did you learn to to run a business or to grow a business? I mean, that's a lot of growth to happen in almost nine years now. I mean, a total of come you know something like eighty people. Mm. Um, how did you learn to do that? Well, I think it helped having being in real estate helped because being in real estate is a is running a small business. Yes. You know, you are a contractor. Mm. You have expenses. You have income. Uh, you have tax returns you got to get done, uh, and you have and scaling a team as I did. You have employees, so you have to learn to, you know, be decent at least at the HR side of things, managing people, empowering them to get the job done, mm. trying to stay out of the way when you, when you, when you need to. Um, and, you know, no one's naturally, no, you know, very few people I think in the world are naturally good at that stuff. You have to learn. And so I had, you know, a good, decent 15, you know, 15 years or so uh, doing that before uh, we launched Low & Co. Mm. Uh, also, so at least you, you knew the real estate process and all the tasks involved and, in, you know, from, from start to finish of, um, you know, the end-to-end, end-to-end process. 100%. Of I don't know if you've ever read, read a book called The E-Myth, but, you know, mm, that talks have, about, yeah. you know, being the technician, mm. you know, and then you've got the sort of entrepreneur and then the manager, right? Mm. And I think you know the technician side of it, the real estate could do, mm. um, uh, and and having the team help me with some of those other things around being the manager and mm. uh, you know being the entrepreneur as well. Just uh, so real estate was, was a handy background. 
However, uh, I'm an avid reader. I love reading. And so for me, um, you know, learning through mistakes and I, I, I mean, you know, finding, getting, having people luck, you know, we've got, we've got some great people on. I mean, um, Jason Lowe's got a lot of corporate experience, which is really helpful for me not coming from a corporate background. Mm-hmm. You know, Kyla has the detail focus, uh, which I lack with my hyperactivity. Mm-hmm. And so we have, a, we have, a, we have a, a bit of a joke at the management team, which is that, you know, between the three of us, we make a pretty good human. Yes. And I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah, you're nice. What about, do you think there are particular traits that um, make someone more likely to be successful in, in starting and running a, a small business, whether it be real estate or not, or also um, traits uh, to be a successful real estate agent? Uh, well, beside resilience, which I think is a big one we've talked about in a mm. previous po- podcast, I mm. think a really, really important one is to be comfortable with uncertainty. In fact, you have to thrive on uncertainty, right? True. And, the, and, and, and what I've noticed about people is they are huge, if there's a bell curve, right, there are real extremes on either side as to whether people love uncertainty or hate it, right? Like they, there are certain personalities where they just wouldn't enjoy being an entrepreneur. They wouldn't. They don't want to stand on the bow of the ship and say, "Let's go into that storm," mm-hmm. right? That's mm-hmm. not their personality at all. And mm-hmm. and as an entrepreneur, you really need to have that, you know, that desire to head into the storm, stand on the bow of the ship, tell the crew where you were going. Well, no, we're going. We're going to that storm. You know, mm-hmm. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Right, we'll figure it out. And uh, and I think that's the most important thing. And then you know. If, you, if an entrepreneur is self-aware enough to be, able to, to, to be able to do that but understand where their limitations are on the management side or the technician side and, and support with good people, uh, and so self-awareness and a, and a love of uncertainty, I think mm. those two things are really important. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And any thoughts on being a successful agent? Uh, well, resilience is a big one for me. I mean, I think with an agent, you can be – there is a little bit of entrepreneurialism, right? You still have to be have a True. little bit of that. Yep. I mean, you don't know. You, you, you know, there's a saying that we often bat around in, uh, at Longco, which is, you know, as an agent, you wake up every day unemployed. Yes. you got to go out and hunt for your dinner. Yep. And, uh, you know, and you've got to enjoy that. So there's got to be a little bit of that, I think. But but there is – if you think about the agents that we have in, in Longco, there is a wide range of personalities. So there's no one – Personality, you don't have to be super charismatic. Charismatic, it does help, but you don't have to be. Yep. You don't necessarily have to be, you know, an empath, but that helps too. And mm. so there's just different people connect with different people, and there will always be an agent for every person out there. Yeah. So you need that big breadth of different personalities. But I think the big one's resilience. You know, you get so many no's. You, you know, there's a, that old equation. What is it in real estate? No, no plus no plus no equals yes. Right, I heard that, <laughs> yeah. but it makes sense. I think there's more no's. Yeah, just to appeal to you, the mathematician. Yes, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. yeah, the nose is a bit light on that. Sometimes yeah. I get asked that question too. Like, what sort of person is going to be successful mm-hmm. in real estate? And I just, I, I cannot find. Uh, you know, there's, yeah. there's no particular characteristic uh, as far as I can see that. But I agree fully that the one thing that you do need is a major hunger. Yeah. Because only if you've got that real fire in your belly are you going to be able to push through the resistance to, to, to making it work, yeah. in particular to getting the yeah. listings, right, yeah. especially when you're earlier on in your career. Yeah. You know, that takes something to persuade someone to, to entrust you yeah. with their largest asset. Yeah, hunger yeah. and a thick skin. Hunger and a thick skin. You can be any shape, any size, any colour, any type of personality, yeah. as far as I can yeah. tell. Um, there's no right way to be a real estate agent, mm. if you like, you know? Mm. Yeah. And, and energy helps too. A lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, what about, I don't know, favourite management gurus or um, I- any kind of gurus that you've really learned a lot from and you really look up to and uh, that you've taken a lot of inspiration from or, or management mantras, if you like, any, any of that? Sure. Well, I mean... Like you, I, I started really my interest in business through investment. Mm-hmm. I was interested in investing as from a, from a young age, and so I read a lot of you know the sort of wisdom from Charlie Munger and mm-hmm. and uh, and Warren Buffett. You know who mm-hmm. uh, you know if you look at the investor, the great investors in the world, you know um, following Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger is not going to make you a great investor, right? But there's no great investors out there who don't follow Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Right. So, yes. so it's not, uh, you know, I mean, the reality is that, 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 that um, you know, what they teach really is wisdom, I think. And, uh, 
And so a lot of the things that have guided me through my business career have actually, you know, often the wisdom has come uh, from things that I've, I've read from those guys. But, you know, there's, there's all sorts of great people. I mean, Jack Welsh is a, is a mm. classic one. Mm. I, I think, you know, one mantra that comes to mind, which I, I think about all the time now, is, is when you are running a business, you're making decisions with imperfect information, right? Yep. And, and so when you've got imperfect information, sometimes you, you will never change that. You have to make the decision under that, those conditions. And Jack Welsh has a saying, which is strategy is just picking a general direction and executing like hell. Right. And I re- and that's been a powerful one for me because you know uh, having sometimes I've had a you know been prone as I'm sure a lot of people are to trying to f- find the perfect solution for something or try or yeah. if there's multiple paths don't, don't saying, let perfect get in the way of progress don't let it get in the way of progress sometimes yeah. you just got to pick the the path and if it's wrong just revert course later mm-hmm. or or change something do mm-hmm. it differently it's not a straight line it's is not it? a straight line no. right so that that's been a really really powerful one for making management decisions and for driving the driving the boat yeah yeah i mean you mentioned warren buffett and charlie munger of course um, i mean rest in peace charlie munger um mm-hmm. but uh warren buffett is m- many times uh, i've read warren buffett um saying um that being a good investor really helps you in business and being a good business person really helps you be a good investor as well well it's about capital allocation ultimately i mean all business yep. is capital allocation right the, yep. the goal of business is to make a high return on your capital mm-hmm. as is as an investor mm-hmm. and um and yep. so i think those they're highly correlated those um, those skills yeah 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 um so earlier on and and and, and quite often you joke about you know, uh, being ADHD. I mean, are, are you actually, or what? <laughs> well, if you, I mean, you know, you know me pretty well. I mean, I, I think yeah, Kyla was born with the attention. I was born with the deficit, unfortunately. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I was I was diagnosed with ADHD oh, right. way you before it was tre- way before it was trendy. Yes, yes. yes <laughs> you know, yes. this is uh, when I was in primary school. So, you know, I was distracting other kids in the back of the classroom. And it's one of the reasons school didn't work out for me. I mean, they were, I think it's better today, I believe. I mean, I, don't, I haven't had uh, direct experience with that. But, yeah. you know, back then there was no real place for me, you know, for someone with my hyperactivity. And, and the thing is, if you can't concentrate on what's going on at the front of the classroom, you get five minutes in it, you've lost it. Mm-hmm. You're not going to catch up, right? So, Hard and to, then if yeah. you're hyperactive, what do you start doing? You know, you're looking for for entertainment, and you're looking for you start somebody being to a serious pain in the ass. You really do. You know? <laughs> so that was me, and I, look, I'm I'm happy to own that. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, not proud of it, but it, it, it was the way my school 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 life went. So, but you know, I was lucky enough through the vagaries of life to stumble mm. across something you know mm. in real estate which really suits yeah. a bit of energy and, and resilience and all those things. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, ADHD is a is for me is a bit of a superpower. For ADHD and, and the, proud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know, and you know, I mean, I, I'm really passionate about that. I mean, people should see their neuro- neurodivergences as not, you know, it doesn't have to be a negative thing, right? Mm-hmm. And and you know, I would always open the door to any anyone who has kids with ADHD, or you know, if there's anyone out there that ever wanted me to go and um, you know talk to someone or mm-hmm. or share my experiences, because I know that these things can, if you get into the right area. You know, uh, you know these these things can be absolute superpower. And I know people with Asperger's mm. who are. There. I mean, we've got you know. I mean, we know we've got neurodivergent people in, in our office with other issues that make them really good mm-hmm. at what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And so, um, any particular advice you might offer to people who are th- considering starting out? Um, you know, running a re- real estate <laughs> business. Don't, don't, apart don't, from don't, don't do, do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like, I think the reality is, is I mean, for, you know, it's, it's an incredible thing to, to watch something evolve and, and grow and, and to do cool, cool, cool shit with cool people, right? So mm. I, I never, never put someone off that. I, I think real estate itself, one thing we've learned that I know now that I probably didn't know when we launched is you need scale. And it's mm. hugely risky, right? I mean, there's, there's only ever going to be in any local markets, we're going to be, you know, a, a, you know one, one top, top agency probably two subservient ones, and then you're going to just get a smattering of, of very small agencies. And, and we know the economics now of that, which we didn't know when we launched, but it, it's it's not great. And so, you know, you can create a more complicated job for yourself by launching a real estate business. Mm. Uh, then, and, 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 and suddenly you've got to manage more people, you've got to manage a brand, you, you know, you've got to do all this stuff. When actually the, the financial returns probably aren't there, you could, build, you could do better building a team within an agency and actually just taking yeah. the cash flow. Yep. 
um, unless you go for, for big scale, right? Mm-hmm. Unless you mm-hmm. want to get into that top top three space and then you really have a have a business. And of course, we didn't know that back then. So my only advice to aspiring entrepreneurs would be, if, if it works out, it'll be the best venture you've ever had. It'd be mm-hmm. super fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is very, it's, it's hugely risky. And, and, and actually, you can do incredible things by building business within a business. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I would never, you know, I did it. I loved it. I still mm-hmm. love it. And mm-hmm. I would never... I'd never try and put someone off that. Mm. It's more just the reality of it that, that I know now. And perhaps, as we talked about, maybe, maybe a bit of ignorance and naivety is, yes, is, yeah, is, yeah. is helpful. And, yeah, you know. yeah. And um, there's been a lot of growth, obviously, and um, now Low & Co is kind of um, at the top of the game, if you like, in the Wellington real estate space as far as agent, agencies go. Um, I mean, what's next? Are there are there more plans? Is there more growth ahead for Low and Co? Um, what's, yeah. what's, what's, it's what's, a great what's, question. What's so, ahead? so for me personally, I, I I thrive off progress, right? And so I wake up every single day thinking about how I can make this agency better for our our team, for our salespeople, for their customers, their, their, their the buyers and sellers out there. And 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 you know, if we I know that if we support our salespeople, you know. Work, with world class support, and we give them the best culture that we can, and we help grow their grow their businesses. Then, um, mm-hmm. then you know the buyers and sellers will get better service, and uh, and 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 the business will continue to grow. And I love that. So the day that we're standing still is the day that I'm bored, right? Mm-hmm. It's the day that, that that things change for me, right? So so for sure we're we're foot to the floor. Um, you know we 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 love the competition. We we uh, my my view is you know you should be able to compete you know fiercely but fairly during the day. And have a beer at the end of it. Mm-hmm. That's how I approach the com- competition side of it. Yep, yep. And uh, and so we, you know, we welcome with open arms communication with our with our competitors, and uh, and we'll compete fairly. But we want to grow this business, and we want to do it with fun, yeah. with energy, and, yep. and by supporting people. Yeah, yeah. And it has been a lot of fun, hasn't it? It's, it's been, been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of energy. Yeah. It's been a hell of a ride. It has. So I think we need a high five. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. No, well, pre- thanks so much. Thanks for, for the super interesting um, discussion. Appreciate it, Adam. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, that was Lowdown. So thank you for subscribing, uh, for joining joining us. We're going to do another one uh, very shortly. And uh, yeah. See you next time. Cheers.